Okay, let's do this. Kia ora team, my name's Ben and let's talk sepsis. So what is sepsis? Sepsis is when we get a dysregulated host response to a pathogen. So let's start with a local immune response. So what happens is we get a pathogen, it could be a zit, and we get toll light receptors on white blood cells that sense the pathogen and then they form a response to deal with the baddie. The way they do this is we've got plasma derived and cell derived inflammatory mediators. So in the plasma, which is just the watery bit of our blood, they, we have the complement system, coagulation factors and the kinin system. And then our cell derived inflammatory mediators are things like histamine, pro-inflammatory cytokines, tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-1, leukocytes, prostaglandins, platelet activating factor, nitric oxide. So basically what this is saying is our pathogen attaches to our toll light receptors on our white blood cell and then through all these mechanisms we have an inflammatory response. Okay, what is inflammation? If our pathogen is out here in the tissue, we need to get our white blood cells to the pathogen to break it down and destroy it. So we get vasodilation, so our blood vessels open up around the area that the pathogen is. This is good, so we're gonna have like big open doors so more blood can come to the area, our pipes get bigger. Then we get increased permeability. So now we've got more blood to the area, we make those blood vessels more leaky. So with more holes, those white blood cells that we have can leave the blood vessel and go to where the pathogen is. Next up, we have chemotaxis. So this is where our inflammatory mediators go around and they call more white blood cells to the area. This is good, because our white blood cells, if we get more of them to the area, then we've got more goodies to fight the baddie. Chemotaxis. Then, well, local inflammatory response, we get increased clotting factors. So this means we're more likely to form clots. Again, this is a good thing, because if we form clots around where our pathogen is, it helps to localize it and stop it from spreading. What else? So increased temperature. So the increased temperature, it's gonna increase our metabolism to try to help defeat the pathogen, and it's also gonna be harmful to the pathogen. So all this inflammation, which what we see is redness, heat, swelling, and pain, that's the, the symptoms of inflammation. And a local area is gonna be perfect for containing and defeating a pathogen. So that's normal local immune response. So how does it go bad and how does it turn to sepsis? Okay, so either we have a failure to contain the pathogen and the pathogen then gets systemic and goes throughout the bloodstream and goes everywhere or there's a really high pathogen load um, or high virulence. So either we got lots of baddies or these baddies are really powerful and therefore the pathogen spreads everywhere. So we get an inflammatory response everywhere or we can have a weak host. So the patient could be weak. They may be old or young, immunosuppressed or have lots of comorbidities. And then we get a uh, excessive immune response, so a cytokine storm. So we get lots of cytokines calling for an inflammatory process everywhere. So that's a key point. Either in sepsis, the pathogen spreads everywhere and we get an inflammatory response everywhere, or the pathogen remains localized, but our body becomes dysregulated and signals for inflammation to occur throughout the body. Either way, we get that local immune response now systemically, so throughout the body. Okay, so what's gonna happen? So if we get this local response everywhere, too much vasodilation, it's gonna make the pipes too big everywhere, and then increase capillary permeability, 
our pipes get leaky, if we lose blood volume and our pipes are too big, now we're gonna struggle to maintain our blood pressure. So our body, to compensate, will increase heart rate. Next thing, if we have our chemotaxis and we, we want to get more white blood cells to a local area, same thing's gonna happen systemically now. So our white blood cell count will increase. So we'll get leukocytosis. So we flood our body with white blood cells. That localized clotting is now gonna be everywhere. So we get increased clotting and we get the thrombi forming. So little clots are gonna start appearing where they shouldn't be in our body. And then that local increased temperature is now systemic. So your patient is gonna to start to have a fever. So increased body temperature. So this is, this is sepsis a dysregulated host response. And then as it progresses and it deteriorates, we're gonna to progress towards septic shock. Okay, so as we continue vasodilating and as we continue with our increased permeability, eventually our heart's not gonna be able to compensate by increasing heart rate and now our blood pressure is gonna to start to drop. And that's, that's when we start to get into shock. So remember shock is where we have a trouble with circulating enough oxygen to provide our cells and tissues. Initially, our white blood cell count shot up, but eventually as sepsis progresses, we're gonna start running out and we're gonna lower our white blood cell count, which is leukopenia. Then, remember initially we had more clots forming, but as we do this, we run out of clotting factors, so eventually we're gonna have clots that are in our body, but without the clotting factors, now we're gonna get bleeding as well. So thrombocytopenia, we run out of clotting factors, and DIC is diffuse intravascular coagulation. So this is the unfortunate consequence of having clots in our body and also bleeding. So this is a very late stage. Okay, remember initially we had that fever, then because of, because of shock and lack of oxygen transportation, we move from aerobic metabolism to anaerobic metabolism. Problem with this, aerobic metabolism, we generate lots of heat when we break down our fat and glucose with oxygen. If we don't have enough oxygen and we use anaerobic metabolism, we don't generate as much heat. So we go from having our fever to progressing back to a normal temperature and then eventually a below normal temperature. Uh, the other problem with anaerobic metabolism is the byproduct of lactic acid and then our body becomes more acidotic. So acidosis. Acidosis is bad because our body works in a nice narrow range of pH. So if we dip out of that range, then all our body processes aren't gonna start working as well as they should. And we're gonna have organs starting to fail. Which leads us to MODs. So again, as sepsis progresses into septic shock, we're gonna get multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. So this is where two or more of our organs fail. So remember we've got these thrombi, little blood clots, they're gonna be clotting up all the blood flow to organs. So our kidneys, our liver, our pancreas, our brain, um, that's not a good thing. Remember we've got decreased oxygen transport because we're in shock. So our organs need oxygen, so they're gonna to start to fail. The inflammatory process itself, all these white blood cells, all this inflammation, its job is to destroy the pathogen. But if we've got inflammation everywhere, that inflammatory process is gonna to start to destroy our own tissue as well, leading to MODs. And of course, acidosis is gonna start causing organ damage as well. So that's MODs. The other thing that we can get as we follow through our sepsis continuum down to sepsic shock, is ARDS, so Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. 
So this is where we get um, alveolar and capillary damage in the lungs. So remember we got these thrombi, these little blood clots that can be plugging up the blood flow to the lungs, which is gonna cause decreased oxygenation. We're gonna end up with pulmonary edema. So we're gonna get swelling in our alveoli, hypoxia, and to combat it, our person is gonna increase their respirate to try to get as much oxygen in as possible. All right, so that's a nice simplified quick version of progressing from a local inflammatory reaction all the way to sepsis and then septic shock. All right, team, heavy studying. <laughs>